How does fudge? So I thought I'd give you guys a little behind the scenes of my channel and how I do things. All right, jackpot. Looks really gross, but when I clean that, it's gonna be great for the frogs. Fresh, clean duckweed. First things first, get some water in here. I'm gonna clean this filth. All right, now I'm just getting all to this fresh water and then I'll clean it. That's it. So I'm putting together my uh, breeding tree frog setup, uh, which is a video coming up by the way. And the guys are in a temporary tub and listen to this. They came, they came. They're like, hurry up, hurry up, Papa, get us in there. Loud, whistling tree frogs are loud. That is a whistling tree frog call by the way. Typical man, I need to get all the frogs and transfer them into the new terrarium and look at them. See him, see his little eyeball in this little crevice. Oh man, I don't even know how I'm gonna get him out. Annoying. All right, so really annoying. Not really annoying, but kind of cool. One of my forest geckos is like deep in this punga log. Um, do you know how it got on there? But obviously, this is how geckos. Uh, man, they're super. They're super shifty, man. They can hide in the tiniest places, get in the tiniest cracks. But have a look at this. Absolutely unreal. I'm just gonna have to wait for him to come out. I can't even get him. Ah, can't really see too well. Oh, yep. There we go. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but that's. Yep. There we go. See that? That is a forest gecko's tail. Yep. There we go. Look at that. See that? Tail. Tail body. So all tucked up and tucked up away in winter, but I'm just gonna have to let her come out in her own time. All right, so <clears throat> tonight I suppose uh, we're gonna look at a few things. Um, this is, and I'm the style of these videos, I've decided to make this video, like I said, a bit more raw, a bit more uncut, just me floor with my reptiles. Now this is a, a juvenile holding facility, we'll call it, for native New Zealand geckos. Now. I want to talk to you about these, this species. So ever since I was a kid, I mean, this probably started my whole like obsession with these animals. And it was the, this species, Northern Green Geckos. So I've got three species of New Zealand geckos in captivity. I've got Northern Green Geckos, Forest Geckos, and Royal Carver Geckos. All need a permit, right? So in New Zealand, very strict guidelines. You need a permit to keep them in captivity. You need them in certain parameters. These guys usually, I mean, I keep my adults outside. My juveniles I keep inside, especially over the first year or in winter. Just because, A, oh, I just worry about them, I suppose, because they're so small and cute. And also, it allows me to do visual health checks, uh, I, I suppose, a lot easier because they're in a small environment, a lot more controlled, and I can see them uh, almost every day. So in here, I've got five, uh, and they're small. So, I mean, they'll go. They'll probably go outside in the spring, but basically why I keep them inside is, like I said, visual health checks. I can monitor them. And yeah, so what I do is, I mean, it's winter in New Zealand, so it's still pretty cold, but I'll definitely always give them a mist. So they get a mist twice a day. The Northern Green Echoes come from the Upper North Island, so they get a bit more humidity than we have down south, so hence I want to keep them a bit more, a bit more moisture. The forest geckos are kind of all over New Zealand in different localities, so I'm sure, I mean, it's not going to bother them. They get, I mean, they've got little options here, usually have browse here, but basically I've got a bioactive base, so fully grown with moss and plants and vegetation, and then this is all just browse, so basically just cut, cut offs of native plants that I have growing in my, on my property. And the reason why it's um, cut offs because A, I can't get plant full trees in here, um, and it still mimics and replicates quite, a, they're very arboreal and they're like dense shrubs. So I try to mimic it and I replace it every two, three days. Probably needs to be replaced to be fair, but we'll do that. That's tomorrow job. It's dark. So uh, tonight I'm just going through, uh, I'm going to go to two things. First thing is I've got this honey. Why do I have honey? Well, New Zealand geckos in the wild, they're highly insectivorous. So they love their insects, but they also eat or enjoy uh, nectar, honey, and fruit puree because we have a lot of berries, wild berries that grow on some of the natives, as well as nectar from the flowerings like uh, manuka as well as kanuka. And uh, what else? What other one do I have in here? I'm pretty sure I have, yeah, some kofi. Um, so that all flowers and they enjoy the nectar and they're really cool. So I'll only give this to them maybe once every couple of weeks just to kind of mimic what they would do in the wild. They don't have nectar every day, but it's just a supplement essentially. And they go and they lick it and they love it. So I do this and I just kind of put on branches around where they spend a lot of their time. I kind of know whereabouts they will be. Tomorrow, the forest gecko, I've actually got one out for you guys to have a look at um, before I put him back in. He's a juvie. Absolute incredible animals, but I haven't seen him in a while, so he's decided to make an appearance today, this evening. So the forest geckos are nocturnal, um, heavily nocturnal. They will come out and bust during the day, but mine are quite nocturnal in regards to I only see them at night. The northern greens are cathemeral, meaning that they are active both day and night, but mainly during the day because they're avid sun baskers, right? They love basking, they love the sun. So. 
Let's get this little rascal in. Yeah, what can I say about the forest gecko? Probably one of the most stunning species I've ever seen in, in captivity. Absolutely epic. Looks, I mean, and they all come in different types of camouflage, lo like, I'll, I'll say localities or, I don't know, morphs you'd say, but they're not morphs, they're just different types of forest gecko species we have in New Zealand. They live in different parts of the country. Um, some warmer, some colder. They're actually going through a shed, so that's pretty good. All right, let's have a look at them. All right, so in here, I don't know if you can see it, but new paludarium I built. Waterfall, slow move, very slow moving stream. Kind of wanted to replicate like a slow moving body of water that these guys would get in Japan. It's Japanese fire-bellied newt. So I'm gonna see if this guy is keen for a very small earthworm. Now, Japanese fire-bellied newt. So we get two species uh, in New Zealand. We get the Chinese and the Japanese. It's the only two we've, we have of newt available. These guys are part of the salamander family. I think these guys are super dope. They live for like 20 years. Um, as adults, they're absolutely epic. They look like these little like Godzilla looking aquatic beasts. I don't know how you would want to frame it, but compared to the Chinese uh, species, the Chinese species are way smaller and to get, get to like half the size, these guys are warty. They get like, the males get this, I've got two males and they get this super cool like purple sheen. So they're really colorful, fire belly new. So they got their red and orange belly. This guy's really unique and he's got like a purple and really, really dark red belly. But let's see if he's keen for a worm. I've lost the worm. All right, let's see if he eats this. Yeah, he's keen. So they like, so they kind of just, um, oh, there we go. So they just like vacuum them up. So they kind of eat like a, essentially like a vacuum of the cleaner. They can just, sorry, I'm just getting this already. There we go. He'll handle that worm just fine. They just vacuum them up and suction them up, right? They don't really have teeth. They just use like power and they just basically, like I said, act like a vacuum cleaner and just get that in their gob. So this is a good meal for a man, honestly. Um, that'll probably last them a couple of days. Now as adults, don't really feed them often, maybe like once every two, three days, um, especially in the colder months. But still really active. They like the cold water. They like the cold temperatures, and that makes sense because they prefer that in the wild in Japan. So yeah, try to just make him a naturalistic environment. This guy's um he's big man. He's like six inches, I think. But yeah, look at him. Look at him go. Little cutie. He's like, oh man, I've been waiting all day for this worm, man. Yeah, earthworms. So in New Zealand, uh, we don't have many exotic pets, meaning that we don't have many much exotic food or so say food in captivity. Like we do get the basic insects, so there's, you know, bio supplies of mealworms, black soldier fly larvae, crickets, locusts, house flies, blow flies, things like that, fruit flies. And we don't get uh, superworms. We don't get, um, we get like, there we go, and done. He's he's all done. We get silkworms, which is pretty cool. So we seasonally, and actually all year round, so supplies of silkworms is pretty epic, especially for the larger animals. But these guys, I give them frozen blood worms, I give them white worms. And earthworms. Earthworms are really easy to get as well. I mean, especially in a pesticide-free garden, some decent sized ones. But yeah, that's it. It's Japanese fire new. There is another one in there, but the one like hides and is really nocturnal. Like literally, I'll just see him come out at night. They are nocturnal naturally, so they prefer to come out at night. But this guy's kind of always active and always out. The other one, yeah, I'll see him tonight if I come out. But yeah, this is uh, the Japanese fire bellied newt. These guys start out super small. They're out terrestrial for two, three years. And then they get to this point. Epic. All right, so I thought I'd show you these guys because the two of them are out. These guys are super nocturnal. This is the whisting tree frog of New Zealand. There's one having a little pool, a uh, little swim in the pool, and then there's other one just here sitting on the edge of this leaf. Now, when I say super nocturnal, I mean it as in they're naturally nocturnal, and these guys act nocturnal. So um, a lot of animals in captivity kind of adjust to new ways of life, obviously because of feeding schedules, etc, etc. But I try to keep my animals as naturalistic as possible, meaning that I will feed them at night, I will turn the lights off, and I'll come out with a torch. But this guy clearly has had a very good meal of isopods, which is what I feed them in the winter, because there's not many flies around. Um, he's looking super plump. I mean, look at him. That is a plump little tree frog. These guys don't get very big. This is pretty much almost adult size. Hoping to breed them at some point, but we'll see. They need a slightly different environment, a lot more water. I already have a misting system in place, so I'm replicating rainfall, which is when they breed after a heavy rainfall system. So I can adjust the I can adjust the duration of the mister, do it more frequently, maybe for like a few days, and get them a lot more water. But we'll see. They actually ironically breed on the coldest nights. So these are, I've done a video about these guys in regards to how they thrive in super cold temperatures. And they do. They've naturalized, they've been naturalized in the South Island in New Zealand. And they literally are still active on like freezing nights. So yeah, really, really hardy species of tree frog. Pretty cool. They don't need much water. They actually uh, don't have webbed toes and webbed um, feet or just webbed 
legs, I suppose. So they're really bad at swimming. So they can drown, so just shallow bodies of water, unlike the other, I suppose, cousins around the country. We've got three frogs in the New Zealand pet trade. The golden bell, the southern bell, and the whistling tree frog. The golden bell and the southern bell are a lot larger, a lot more being in the water. They spend a lot more time in the water. These guys are really arboreal, hence I've got them in this very tall enclosure, lots of things to climb on, lots of dense vegetation, lots of places to hide, and yeah, they're doing really well. I've got five adults in here, three of them raised from tadpoles, um, and then I've got other juveniles inside, but these guys are all adults that essentially I've almost raised, but it's pretty cool. Probably about two years of age. A couple of them maybe one year older, but yeah, doing super well. This is their environment. So like I said, I've just fed them um, some isopods last night, but I, I throw on heaps of isopods, man. There'll be, um, and isopods are nocturnal as well, meaning that they come out at night, so it's quite, quite handy. Most I got off Timu, and it's actually epic. Like, cheap, got here in a week, and timer and everything. All right, so topped up that uh, mister. Let's see it in action. Yeah, there we go, look at that. Yeah, there it is. Woo! Honestly, goes hard, man. Mists everything, nice and light. I set up the mister for uh, twice a day, like first thing in the morning and then right at night. This is the third mist of the day, but it's not gonna harm them. Maybe they just think it's a day of heavy rainfall. We'll see, that's it. So, misters off Timo, super easy to connect, just through USB, and it was got here within a week, so totally rate it. All right, so with the Royal Colors, um, they hate this, but I do a full, I guess, extraction so i take them out i do a full visual health check of each individual um, as i have to because like i said with new zealand native geckos you need a permit to keep them in captivity in new zealand so comes with very stringent requirements i just give everything a nice mist down so they're in this bioactive terrestrial indoor enclosure until the spring then they're going to be outdoors all year round and just doing like a soft transition do want to put them out there in winter because it's super cold down here in the south island but everything's growing actually really nicely in here. I'm a bit disappointed because I'll probably convert this into something for the uh, web feet variety. So stay tuned for that one. I'm excited for that one. Because it's already pretty much, I don't know, almost there. So add some sick misting service on top and I think I could make a pretty epic potential frog enclosure. We'll see. We'll see and I'll definitely make a video about that. So first steps first, I give it a good mist. Make sure everything's nice and damp. And I'll put in all the fresh new brows. Um, and I kind of just put it all over the place uh, just to make it as dense and bushy as I can um, And it, you know, it's way easier doing this um, process when they're not in the enclosure obviously Just because they're not getting in the way oh, I put in some more of their hides now. It's quite an impressive system I've got one end that I've kind of built like an underground cave So they go under this rock here and get right underneath and they are terrestrial They like to hide get right in there and often I'll find a couple of them under there under that rock when I do my Inspections, my clear outs, my clean outs. Yeah, so what I do is for my inspection, just make sure they look healthy, make sure their eyes are clear, I'll make sure that they're active alert even in the colder. I try not to take them when it's super, out when it's super cold. I try and do this on days where it's obviously like fairly warm. It's actually a warm day today, so if I look at the thermometer in here, it's 15 degrees, which is good. It's a good, it's a warm winter's day, so I thought I'd do it today. I'm not going to do it when it's one degree, obviously, because it's barely moving. I'm having trouble with sometimes this brow is a bit figgly, uh, not figgly, niggly when I cut it too short, but that's okay. Try to get as bushy as I can, as close to the top as I can, so they can still bask under the UVB. Like I said, it's not full time. In spring, I'm excited to get these guys outside in one of the outdoor enclosures. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll try a bit more branches down this end. So because I've got four, I've got two girls, two boys. They, they are a, they're almost a communal gecko, which is quite interesting because geckos are mainly um, solitary in nature. Uh, males fight a lot, they're aggressive. Um, they often only come together to breed, but royal cows have been found in captivity and even in the wild to commune in groups. And these guys do the same, whereas they'll find three of them in their hide. And they one hide, even though they've got all these two places to hide in the enclosure. So this is not a less is more scenario uh, when it comes to New Zealand geckos, this is a more is more. So you want this to be as dense as possible because A, it protects them from the extremities of the weather in New Zealand, um, just pretending that this is the wild, and B, lots and lots of places for them to climb, hide and hunt, right? And we're not done yet, we're gonna put in the hide. I'll add the final lighting later, but the bamboo hide I like to put here because it's kind of cool, I can kind of check up at night um, or during the day how many are in the hide and what they're doing and the entrance is right there so one last thing honey really voracious yeah he's keen let's get him closer get him closer 
here he comes around this rock here we go and you'll see what they do is these guys do like a vacuum method where they just suck their food in yeah, here we go all right so i do the same for my outdoor geckos as i do for my indoor geckos in regards to i give them a bit of this a bit of the the honey the good stuff all right nectar all right let's carefully open this up it's night time all right it's like 6 30. see how these geckos are doing so none of them are in their hides because they are loving life in this epic enclosure. Having an absolute all night rager, as you can see on the right here, the tail, outside still. Having an all nighter, I see. All right, so today we are introducing two of the youngsters out to the outdoors, because it's spring, so it's almost spring, pretty much spring, perhaps getting warmer you get these guys outside. I don't know how good you can hear me, but it's windy today. But basically what I'm doing is I'm adding some more branches, yeah. Some more options, especially with a couple more geckos in here. Get a couple youngsters in here. More branches for them to explore, bask, share, area spaces. Lots of branches. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing here. A big branch. Oh, quite nice. Yeah, there you go. Then we're gonna attach another hide. Multiple hides. Be free! Here we go, look. Oh. And off he goes. Oh look at him. Little kitty pie already exploring. Can't see what he threw out to the mesh, but look at him, he's peering through the top. It's a nice UVB man, natural sun, nothing better. Look at this cute little little rascal. But yeah, that's it. It's Northland Green Gecko of New Zealand, guys. They love the sun. They love being outside. And this is it. He's going to be outside now. He's done his dash inside in the winter. And it's almost basically spring. Sun's out. Warm weather's out. Let him flourish. So I got this new macro lens on Timu. Link below if you want to get something similar. But this just clips onto my phone. I'm going to test it out on a few things. Let's go check it out, eh? Right, let's go. All right, let's see if I can... Get this sucker close. So these guys are out, they're loving it. They're loving the outdoors, loving the fresh sun. All right, this leftover, leftover terrarium has got isopods everywhere. Good thing to test it out on. Let's give this a whirl. There's no zoom. We got a. These guys are shy, but maybe. Take two. So it's blurry from far away, but you get closer and closer. So grumpy. Yeah, boy. My silkworms for all the geeky eyesight. Yeah, this is what I like to see. Look at them. Loving. I think this is the first time they've had sun. Well, since they've been, been crushed yet anyway. Look at them, little rascals. All right. Crack these suckers open. Silkworms. Overnight shipping. Love Size medium, they reckon. Yeah, boy, look at that. Look at them all. Alright. Alright, guys, get me going. I mean, that was rather aggressive. Yeah, everyone gets a silkworm. Yep. Yum, 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 yum. Honestly, so aggressive. Right, come on. All right, will he eat them out of my hand? Terrified. Yeah, he's seen them. I am terrified. Okay. Good. They're alive. Hey, Mike, how are you? Been a few months, mate. Good to see you. Some munchkin. Let's get some food now. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you're looking good, mate. Long sleep. All right, so they're awake. Still waking up. Good to see them. Looking a bit skinny, but long sleep. Lots of hydration. I give them a bath. Nice. First thing I want to do is I want to make a little lukewarm bath for them. Best way to first thing to do with, best thing to do with reptiles after a very long hibernation, three months almost, is give them a lot of hydration. And they have a little soak. They can warm up. Now that is mad. 
man who needs to bask. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. All the guys out. The two new additions and Godzilla. Yeah, look at him, he's out. He's about, out the mountain, he's loving it. Loving the sun, such a warm day. So I'm glad these guys don't just eat uh, mealworms and insects. They're omnivores, so I can give them veggies. So a bit of dosh, you know, they eat veggies, they eat fruit, they eat scrambled eggs, so they're getting a bit of a mixed diet. They've just woken up from a long sleep, so they need it. All right, I wanna see if I can do something with this. Just gonna hold some honey and some fruit puree. All right, I think that could work. Right about there. All right, the good stuff. All right, there's our fruit paste. So I thought this could be a good position for it, right here, because they can kind of climb down, climb from above and get access to it. I mean, I don't, this is the honey water. I don't actually know. I'll have to test it out and see. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully. So yeah, I'll check the fly trap. And I've got four that I'll get out this morning and then I'll leave it out and I'll give these to the geckos. So that's basically it. In a nutshell, that's what I do. Sunny days. Give these guys some, oh, that's flat. Give them all these little flies in there. And that's it. They've got the honey, they've got the nectar, they've got the fruit puree. Change location, and they got lots of flies to get through. All right, over and out, team.